I'm David Dubelay, and this is Meet the Ocean Encounters. The South Neptune Islands in South Australia, off the coast of the Eyre Peninsula by the Backstairs Passage on the approaches to the Spencer's Gulf. It was a beautiful day, and the sunlight dappled the eelgrass. The water is very clear, and here there are great white sharks. The famous shark expert Rodney Fox and I were diving to make a picture of great white sharks. And we did something very different that hadn't been done before. This is 1980. We took the shark cage, and instead of dangling it over the back of the shrimp boat that we were working from, we put it right on the bottom. And it landed there in a very soft bed of green eelgrass that swayed back and forth. And I looked out, and here was a nice-sized great white shark, about 12, 13 feet long, swimming slowly around the cage. And I said, you know, I can get out of this cage, and if I'm very careful, I can lay in the eelgrass bed and have the shark swim over me in a different kind of picture, relating shark to the bottom instead of a great white shark to blue water. So I opened the cage door, and I stepped out, and I lay down in the grass with my foot touching the edge of the cage as if I was stealing a base in baseball, knowing all the time that that cage was there. And the shark swam around and swam around, and I was making some very lovely pictures. And then the shark began to move closer and closer and closer. The pictures got better and then became a little bit, well, dicey. It's when an animal begins to become excited you can almost feel a vibration in the water, not because it's having its picture taken for the National Geographic, but it might want to actually investigate you in a much more intimate way, like maybe biting you. So I said, okay, time to get back into the cage. Because I knew the cage was right behind me. The cage is right behind me. And I felt with my foot, and I couldn't feel anything but eelgrass. And I looked around, and there's no cage. What happened was a big swell came over the reef, picked up the shrimp boat, picked up the cage, and moved it about 50 to 60 feet away from us, almost at the edge of visibility, and plunked it down. And then I said to myself, well, that's not a problem. I'll just swim slowly back to the cage, just keeping an eye on the shark. And then I realized, I had no fins, because you don't wear fins in a shark cage, there's no room. All I had was my nice, soft neoprene socks. And I started pedaling, and it was like a child's nightmare, wearing white socks, trying to move back across a very smooth wooden floor, and for every step you take, you slip two times closer. And that's what it was like with this shark. I'd take a step backwards, a shark would move. I'd take a step backwards, a shark would move. I'd push him away with the underwater camera, the ocean eye, which is a big orange-colored housing and a big plexiglass dome. And I'd push him away, and I'd push him away, and he began to circle tighter and tighter and tighter. And I got right next to the cage, and Rodney picked me up at the back of my tank, plucked me over the top of the cage, dropped me in, and the shark smashed into the cage, full of enormous conical, triangular shaped teeth. And we looked at each other and said, Whew. And that was one of my early encounters with a great white shark, a little bit more intimate than I would have wished. Meet the Ocean. Thank you for listening to Meet the Ocean Encounters. This episode was produced by Ashley Caritis and Paul North with sound design by Kelsey Anderson. Special thanks to David Dubelay for sharing his shark story. And you can find more educational content, ways to donate to our nonprofit, or subscribe to our podcast at meettheocean.org. We thank you for listening, and until next time, may the salt water be with you.